स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया everybody this is dr vishal trivedi from the department of biosciences and bioengineering iit guwahati and in the course basics of biology we are going to discuss and, and understand the uh, the different properties of the living organisms and how you can be able to study the living organisms so living organism could vary very from a very tiny uh, particles like viruses or it could be a very large organism such as the dinosaurs so whether it is a uh, virus particles or whether the dinosaurs both of these living organisms actually share some of the similar properties or also they have some of their exclusive properties as well so as you can see that many uh, the coronavirus is uh, simply a virus which is actually causing the disease and it is also similar to the some of the previously known viruses and its mode of transmission is also the same that it goes from the one person to another person through the coughing and other kinds of uh, mode and uh, but there are exclusive properties there are exclusive properties so that it this virus is actually causing the pathology within the humans and that pathology is uh, causing the death of the individuals but scientists are trying to understand the biology of this particular virus and how they are doing it they are actually doing the different types of experiments then they are collecting the data and then these data are going to be interpreted and then they are trying to draw the conclusions from these experiments and that's how they are coming up with the new and new uh, hypothesis as well as the theories so that you can be able to overcome the pathological outcome of this particular viruses so as you can see that the understanding the living organisms and how a particular living organism is exhibiting its different biological activity is a easy task uh, considering that you will actually going to plan a systematic study you are going to do the systematic experiments you are going to analyze those experiments and based on those conclusions you can be able to draw you could be able to design the new experiments so the purpose of this particular course is that we are trying to give you a glimpse of what is the living organisms what are different properties of a living organisms and how this living organism uh, you know how you can be able to study a particular living organism utilizing the different types of uh tools and different types of uh, ideas what is available in the uh, in, in with this particular stream of science so the first question which i would like to ask you is so what is science and what is its objectives so we start our lecture today with this particular questions that what is science and what is its objectives so science or uh, is literally means that you have the knowledge so science literally means that you are actually having the a uh, systematic arrangement of the knowledge and that knowledge can be interpreted that knowledge can be utilized for the human welfare or trying to understand the biology of that particular organisms so these topics which are been part of the under the big umbrella of science are ranging from the specialities to a very cutting edge open heart surgeries and all these comes not by a single day but it it comes by a systematic over uh, progression systematic analysis of the different types of experiments and the results uh, so because of that the humans have the uh, you know humans have uh, decided that they will go with this kind of particular type of 
uh, you know study and that's how they are actually trying to understand the different aspects whether it is something which is related to physiology or whether it is related to something else so because of that the uh, the science is further being divided into the two different main branches these main branches are the social sciences and as well as the natural sciences you know that the every living organism is actually uh, remain in the within a society whether it is a uh, you know whether it is a jungle or whether it is a city like guwahati uh, the the living organisms are actually are under the continuous interaction with their neighbors their uh, environments and all other kinds of things and uh, so because of that the science is further being divided into two main branches one is called as the social sciences the so social sciences is actually the science which is actually going to discuss deal with the human behaviors and its relationship with the other humans in a society and it is very complex in terms of the many aspects what is being covered within the uh, within the social sciences uh, and th that is, that is actually a very very big uh, you know field of science where you can be able to study the many aspects related to the relationship of the humans with the other humans and as well as the relationship of the humans with the other uh, fa uh, non biological factors what is present within the society apart from that you have the natural sciences so within the natural sciences you have the various fields which deals with the understanding the natural phenomena and that are grouped within the natural sciences what you see here is that the social sciences so within the social sciences you have the many sub branches which are being developed as the uh, as the human were progressing within the society and how they are uh, been uh, you know utilized uh, because you know as you grow and as you in you know generate more and more knowledge you are actually developing the uh, you know you know you are trying to bifurcate so that you will be able to be able to focus on a particular topic and that's how the natural science, social sciences or the natural sciences are further being subdivided into the different fields to study a, a, a specific aspects of the particular uh, uh, you know so particular branch of the science so the social sciences which are further being divided into the specific uh, you know sub branches these are as follows so you have the anthropology you have the economics you have educations you have geography you have history then you have linguistics then you have political science psychology public administration and the sociology so these are not extensive exhaustive list of the fields or the sub branches what are being covered within the social sciences it is possible that you may have the some additional sub branches which are not being listed here this is just to give you an idea that these are the different types of fields which are being evolved from a single science field and then it is further divided into social sciences and natural sciences and within the social sciences you have the these many different sub branches for example the anthropology it is the field of science which study the past and the present of human considering the combined knowledge feedback from the social sciences the biology and the human behavior so anthropology is actually going to discuss about the human behavior within the society and how uh, the different types of uh, you know knowledge feedback from the social sciences then you have the economics this field of the science which actually understand the production distribution and the consumption of the wealth then you have the education so this field of science is actually understand the latest tools and techniques and it actually is going to develop the different fields different tools so that the learning experiences from a human could be more and more better uh, for example we are you know conducting the mooc courses so this mooc courses uh, idea of the mooc courses came from the uh, you know the people who were doing the study in the or research within the education field and that's how they realized that it would be possible to go with the high end uh, knowledge to thousands and millions and you know billions of students simply by if you go with the online courses similarly you have the geography so this field of the science which actually studied the several aspects of earth including the soil type spatial location of the rivers mountain and environment so geography is actually going to help you in terms of the how 
the location of the different types of rivers are available so it actually going to help with the natural resources how you can be able to exploit the natural resources and so on then you have the history the field of science which actually study the past of the human culture and experience in different frames so so the history is very important uh, for the social development of a human being because the history actually tells us that what mistake you have made in the past and what experiences you have gained by doing the, this particular you know so if you study if you listen the uh, you know the ancient stories if you story and, and then if you understand that okay they have made this mistake by doing by following this particular thing then why not we should not do that because otherwise uh, you know we will also going to commit the similar kind of mistake so that kind of new information you get by studying the history uh, similarly you have the linguistics uh, field of science which actually study the human language then you have the political science the political science is the field of science which the theory and practice of politics and political behaviors so that is uh, you know political science then you have the psychology the field of study which study the human behavior in context to the mental processes so psychology is also a very very important field where the physicians or doctors are trying to understand what kind of changes are happening within the mental illness or in within your brain or the thinking process and because of that you are trying to develop different types of diseases uh, you can you know imagine that the people are going with the depressions and all other kinds of mental problems and they are only you know they so they will be getting cured simply by you know uh, changing their mood and changing the understanding the what is happening with the thinking process and that's how they are been you know uh, you know diagnosed with the particular disease and that's how they are being cured by the doctors then you have the public administration so the this field of science which is study the management of the human workforce in an organization to achieve the maximum efficiency and then you have the social social sociology and that field of science which actually study the human behavior and its relation within the society so apart from the social sciences you also have the natural sciences these natural sciences are as like just like as we discussed for the social sciences the natural sciences are also being subdivided into the sub branches these are the physical sciences then you have the earth sciences and then you have the life sciences the branch within the physical sciences are actually studying the processes or uh, which are operating within the law limit system the two main branches so fall within the physical sciences are the physics and the chemistry now the earth sciences the earth the branch within the earth sciences study the planet earth the topics within these branches are the atmosphere hydrospheres oceans biosphere as well as the solid earth the main branches fall within the earth sciences are the ecology then oceanography and geology and the meteorology meteorology is the field of science which actually going to tell you what will be the weather tomorrow whether there will be a thunderstorm where there will be a raining whether there will be a, you know some hails are going to fall and how the weather is going to be for next one month or couple of weeks so that you can be able to plan your uh, you know different uh, work or uh, other kinds of things right Similarly, you have the life sciences. The branch within the life sciences study the living organisms such as the plant, animals, and humans. The main branches falls within the life sciences are the geology and the botany. Many of the life sciences branches are interdisciplinary and interact with it, with the subject to understand the better understanding of the living organism. So the life sciences is a is a is a field of science which actually study the living organisms. this which includes the plants animals and humans viruses bacteria algae fungi and all other kinds of uh, living organisms whether it they you can be able to see them through the naked eye or not or whether you can be able to utilize some tools to study them so uh, there are mainly been uh, fall into the two different categories the geology and the botany so the life sciences are actually dealing with the living organisms and life sciences are also been called as a biology so what is mean by the biology biology is a field of science which are been formed and so if you see the biology the biology is a term which is been made 
by the two names the bios and the logos right so what is mean by the bios bios is called as the living organisms which means and the logos means the study so biology is a field of science which is actually going to study the living organisms so as the definition concerned the, the the field of science which actually study the living organism is known as the biology and the person who study the biology is called as the biologist so before we getting into the detail of the biology and the different aspects what are going to be we are going to cover in this particular course let's understand some and introduce you to some of the biologist who have actually done uh, the remarkable uh, you know work and that because of them we could be able to reach to this stage where we can be able to do the gene manipulations where we can be able to do the many types of molecular biology related experiments cell biology related experiments where we could be able to generate the test tube babies uh, we could be able to even generate the you know the uh, artificial um, uh, things and all that right so let's study the and uh, let's realize the contribution of the some of the eminent biologists this is not the exist exhaustive list i have just taken few examples to give you an idea that how the eminent biologists have actually uh, you know paved the way so that you can be able to understand the different aspects of the biology so the biology started with the so these are the few unknown few known biologists where you have the aristotle galen uh, andrea villiers then you have the marcello marpecchi then you have william harvey then you have the antony von leeuwenhoek and the lastly what we have is the charles darwin so what you see here is the aristotle the aristotle is also been called as the father of biology because aristotle was the first person Uh, or even or in general in we will say that he was the first scientist or the biologist who realized this that the, there are many different types of the uh, you know the uh, living organisms present and that's how he has actually attempted the first time how we can be able to classify these living organisms so he so aristotle was the greek philosopher right and he actually put the first attempt how you can be able to classify the biota what is mean by the biota is the living organisms right biota includes the living organisms of the uh, that particular uh, you know uh, living organism whether this that includes the plants or the animals right so he has actually utilized that information and that's how he could be able to called as the father of the biology then we have the galen so this is the picture of the galen right and he was the greek physician and he was the first to perform the dissection so he could be able to utilize, he could be able to he has developed the tools and because of utilizing that tools he could be able to perform the dissections which means he could be able to cut the body of a particular animal and he has shown the different types of organs what are present in that particular animals and that's how he was called as the father of anatomy so anatomy is a field of science which actually study the internal structures of the particular organisms which means it is actually going to say what are the different organs are present for example in a human uh, we have the heart the liver the lungs the pancreas the you know the all different types of organs and these different types of organs have the different contribution in terms of the different aspects of the physiology then we have the andreas uh, villiers so this is the andreas villiers uh, and he, he made the first dissection on the human anatomy which means he has actually done the anatomy of the human beings and that's how he could understand the what are different organs are present in the humans and he discovered the comparative anatomy which means he actually discovered what are the different types of uh, organs are present in humans compared to the other animals then we have the marcello malpighi so it was he was a italian physician and the anatomist and he was actually the founder of microscopic anatomy which means he could be able to do the dissections visualizing the microscopic tools 
Then we have the William Harvey. So William Harvey is also been considered as the father of cardiology, and he showed that conclusively that the heart actually is the organ which actually pumps the blood, and the blood actually circulates within the human body. And he has done the similar type of you know several types of experiment utilizing the tools and techniques whatever available at that point. And then that's how he actually concluded that the heart is the main organ which is responsible for pumping the blood within the human body and he, this is the blood which actually circulates within the human body. Then we have Antony von Leeuwenhoek. So Antony von Leeuwenhoek is famous because he has discovered the microscopes and uh, utilizing its uh, microscope which was very crude and you know the uh, very simple microscope he could be able to discover the microorganisms so which is also he termed as the animocoles which means animal like creatures but they are very very small because in the you know remember that in the ancient times the people were dis understanding that the animal means big which means cat is an animal but the, the the lower organisms are not animals like algae is not an animal or those kind of things right so those things are being broken down. That those th those kind of theory was broken down by the Anthony von Leeuwenhoek because he he utilizing the you know the microscope he could be able to see the microorganism under the, the microscopes and that's how he he has discovered the protozoans and these an, animals are these uh, particles whatever they were living organisms moving living tiny living organisms are being considered as the animal animals. Then we have finally we have the Charles Darwin. So Charles Darwin is actually famous. So this is the Charles Darwin, right? Uh, so, and this is the Anthony von Leeuwenhoek. So the Charles Darwin uh, actually did the several types of experiments with the you know the very extensive expeditions to the uh, around the world actually, and that's how he actually drawn the conclusion that the evolution uh, with of the a particular organism is happening because of the selection by the natural means which means he was he was he was a big advocate or he was a big uh, uh, philosopher of or he was actually understand uh, you know favoring the uh, the idea that the whatever is modifications are happening within a particular living organism that is because the living organism is being forced for going through those kind of modifications because he want to adjust themselves towards the uh, you know the changed uh, uh, natural uh, conditions and he has you, you he has uh, you know he has utilized the different types of models he has uh, you know he has taken the pigeons from the different uh, parts of the world he compared them that how the pigeons are what are their feeding habits and all that and all these results are being uh, presented into the a book which is called as the origin of species so when the charles darwin has uh, written the book like origin of species that year and the following years the origin of species was uh, was the best seller books even the number of copies what are being sold by the you know are, are, are sold by the of, of the origin of species are more than the number of copies of the bible on that particular year so people were buying more and trying and they were you know they were very curious uh, about understanding the evolutions how the humans are being evolved or how the other organisms are being evolved what is the theory behind that and so on and that's how the charles darwin was a very 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 uh, you know influential person uh, you know trying to uh, you know govern the uh, evolution theories and so on right so this is all about the uh, the contribution of the few of the known biologists. Uh, I have, I as I said, you know, these are not the extensive list. This is the, just a simple example of showing you the different uh, scientists and their contributions. So as the name suggests, right? The biology is is a is a field of science which actually study the two aspects of the biology. One is the bios, the other one is logos, right? So, as the name suggests, the definition of the biology is that it is actually going to study the living organisms. So, if you want to study a living organism, a living organism could fall under the two categories. Either it could be uh, the study of the plants or it could be the study of the animals. 
So if you fall under the plants, then you are actually going to use the subdivision, which is called as the botany. Or if it is under the animals, then you can actually be able to utilize the geology. Now, before we get into these particular fields and try to understand the, the properties of these particular living organisms, we have to ask the questions, what is mean by the living organism? What, what defines a particular object as a living organism? Because until you don't define that, you how you can be able to say that or how you can be able to study that particular living organism. Can we say virus is a living organism? Can we say, uh, you know, mobile is a living organism? Can we say something like that? So what parameters we should use to, to define that, okay, this is a living organism and this is not a living organism. So let's understand that by comparing the two uh, two uh, uh, models. One where we have taken a model of the diesel engine and I have compared the properties of a diesel engine with a living organism such as the flowering plants. So what defines the living organisms? So you have, I have given you a comparison of the different properties. So if it is a living organism, so these are the different features what we can actually be able to, uh, you know, use so here you have a living system so we know that the plants are living system and then we i have taken a non-living system so we know that the diesel engine is a non-living system so i have taken a diesel engine uh, so what will be the source of energy in terms of as far as the source of energy is concerned the living systems are actually going to be defined on to the food right so for example, in the case of plants, they are actually going to use the food from the sun, whereas in the case of the other organisms, they are actually going to use the, uh, you know, they are going to use the plant as a food or as a source of energy. Whereas in the case of the, uh, in the case of the diesel engine, it is actually going to use the, uh, the diesel engine as the, uh, as a diesel as the food uh, energy source. Then you have the machinery. So what kind of machinery is present? So machinery is made up of, of the different types of metabolic reactions. If you don't understand any of these terminologies, you will be able to follow you. Once you follow this course, you will be able to understand these, uh, uh, you know, terminologies. So metabolic reactions. So it actually going to, you know, utilize that particular food. Then it will put it into the different types of metabolic reactions. These metabolic reactions are actually going to generate the energy. And that energy is going to be utilized by the that particular organisms. Whereas in the case of diesel engine, it is actually going to be the combustion, which means the diesel is going to go into the engine, and that is actually go through a process of combustion. So combustion is a is a is a process which actually is going to burn the diesel, and that's how you are actually going to generate the energy. What will be the mechanism of utilizing the energy? So, utilization of the produced energy, what you are going to generate within these metabolic reactions are going to be the anabolic reactions, which means the this energy is going to utilize for most of for the anabolic reactions so that you can be able to utilize that for driving the uh, biological activities. Whereas in this case, it is actually going to be a torque which is going to be generated by the combustions, right? Uh, what will be the disposal waste material? So because when you do the anabolic reactions, you are actually or the catabolic reactions, you are actually going to generate the meta uh, the waste material, right? So in both the cases, it is actually going to generate the waste material. So it, the waste material is, is going to be uh, present in the case of biological system. It is going to be a biodegradable uh, waste material. Whereas in the case of the diesel engine, it is actually going to exhaust in the form of smoke. So you see, I have compared the two systems. One is living system, the other is a non-living system. And the, as far as the features are concerned, both of these systems have the similar system or uh, similar features, right? So our question is still remain the same. What defines a living object, right? So considering the properties of a living organisms, people have come up with the different features, which are definitely should be present in a living organism. Let's see what are these uh, features. 
So number of characteristics are being observed in a living organism and it can be defined as so one of the first system what is also should be very very important is that the living organism is should have the self growth and it should also have the self renewal what is mean by the self growth is that you should it, it should be a intrinsic growth rather than the extrinsic growth for example if you take the dust particles right if you take a small dust particle it may still it may also grow right it may grow by taking the another dust particle right and that's how it will actually grow all over the place right and that's how initially you have taken this dust particle but now it becomes this big dust particle but this is a extrinsic growth you are actually adding the dust from outside whereas in the case of living organisms you are only giving you are only going to provide the food and that food is actually going to you know get converted into the energy and that's how this living organism will actually grow in terms of the size in terms of the other kinds of parameters similarly you have to have a self renewal which means the living organism should be able to produce the replica of their same copies which means the living organism if you start with the one living organism it should be able to get broken into and it will give you the two living organism this is going to be the again as i said you know it is going to be a intrinsic it will be coming out of this particular thing whereas in the case of the non living systems you probably have to provide some kind of external forces because of that the dust particle might be get broken down and may give you the multiple copies but that will not going to be self renewal it will it require the additional forces from outside you might have to use a hammer and then you might have to broken a you know bigger stone particle and that's how it is actually going to give you the tiny stone particles but that is not considered to be a self renewal it is considered to be that you are providing a force from outside then it should also have the endogenous ability to produce the energy which means it should have its own self sufficient machinery so that it could be able to produce the energy on its own which means if you say like for example if you take a you know plant you just have to do what you have to do right if you have a plant what you have to do is you have to just provide the sunlight right and that's how the plant is actually be able to going to produce the food so that is called as the endogenous ability to produce the energy you cannot have the non living organism to be uh, you know performing these tasks because they require the exogenous energy source for example just we compare the uh, the living organism versus the diesel engine and it is shown right that the diesel engine required a diesel from outside so you have to pour the diesel whereas in this case it is actually going to keep running the uh, metabolic reactions and that's how it is actually going to be able to produce the foods then uh, the living organism could also be have the movements right it could be able to move from one place to another place definitely we have the exceptions right so, so we, for example we have an exception in the case of plant because they don't move that right? uh, there are plants which also moves along the uh, the water streams but the majority majority of the plants actually are stick stick to a particular place in the soil and that's how they don't move but that does not mean that the plants are not living organism plants are definitely be a living organism because they actually follow some of these properties and then they also should have the ability to self replicate which means uh, the living organism should be able to produce the more copies of the similar kind now if you see that these properties or these parameters so these parameters were actually been uh, you know uh, considered when the people have not discovered uh, uh, some of the you know because there were no technological development so because of that the people have not discovered uh, 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 a non living system such as the robot right so you might have seen the robot uh and uh, you might have seen the you know the robots in the movies also so robots are very much possible and very much could be able to perform some of these tasks and because of that the people have started rethinking and redefining their parameters and their criteria how we can be able to define the living organism for example the robots robots are 
could be able to utilize and reassemble reassemble the new robots and that's how they can be able to have the ability to not the self replicate from the endogenous but if they if you provide them the raw material they could be able to produce more robots right similarly they can be able to reduce the energy because if you put the solar panels into the robots they could be able to generate their own uh, energy and they don't be dependent on the externally provided energy which means they don't require any kind of diesel or electrical energies similarly the robots if they can actually you know so so that's why because the people have started developing some of these complicated non living organisms or non living systems the people have come up with the another additional criteria what will be defined the living organisms so in addition with the advancement in the technology the criteria for the living organism is redefined these redefined criteria are as follows what is a redefined criteria first criteria is that the living organism should have the complex organizations which means it should be composed of the different types of cells which is not possible in the robots robots are only made up of of the uh, different types of electronic components uh, so complex organization which means the living organism should be composed of the different types of cells right so you can have the cells for you know the heart cells you can have the liver cell you can have the lung cells you can have spleen cells like that then it should be having a metabolism which means it should be able to have to produce the energy and utilize and perform uh, which it should should be able to provide the energy and utilize the preformed food material which means uh, it should have the metabolic reaction so that you can be able to produce the energy and it can be able to utilize the preformed food material which means if it provides the food material from the plant it can be able to utilize that it should be responsive so it should be able to respond to the extreme environmental conditions such as the temperature wind and starvation so this is very very important which means the the uh, it should be sensitive for the external factors it should be sensitive see you see the robots robots are not sensitive right even if you send the robots to to the moon where the temperature is going to be extremely cold they don't it doesn't matter to them because they will be still be able to work they will be able to perform their task whereas the humans are actually going to be susceptible for these kind of conditions or even if you send the robots to a very very hot conditions then also it is going to work so that's how the so responsiveness is a very very important criteria for a living organism you might have seen right if you have the you know you might have seen the moving ants in the in your home right as as soon as you uh, you know touch the with the hands they actually change their uh, you know their their direction then they just move away right similarly you might have seen the many other thing right uh then you also have the another criteria which is called as the growth so growth should be endogenous growth it should not be the exogenous growth i have given you an example of the dust particle versus the uh, other living organisms so dust particle are actually going to have the exogenous uh, growth right it should it will capture the uh, more dust particle but then it is actually going to grow because of the exogenous uh, growth right whereas in the living organism you are going to have the endogenous growth similarly it should have the reproduction so it should have the ability to give off the spring so this is a very very important criteria for a living organism it should be able to reproduce it should be able to pass on its genetic material to the uh, to the uh, offspring and that's how it can be able to continue with the uh, within the uh, within the world right and then it should have also have the ability to evolve which means it should have to have the ability to better and better to keep it you know updated within the system right you might have seen right we, we or you might have heard that the humans are being evolved from the monkey right and you might have seen the monkeys right they are very very different from the humans so in a in a in a you know in a million millions years people have started changing their Uh, food habits their ability to learn and that's how they are actually been very very diverged from the uh, from the monkeys so that is a very very important thing that if you change uh, environmental conditions if you change some kind of hurdles 
you will be actually be able to change accordingly so that you will be able to overcome these problems and that is very very important for a living organism because you can imagine that if you could not be able to change the uh, because of the change environmental conditions then it will you will not be able to succeed right then you will be get dead right because if suppose there will be a scarcity of water right and if there is a plant which cannot adopt to these this particular type of uh, low water condition then the, that plant is going to die and that's how it is actually will not be able to propagate it will not be able to give the offsprings and that's how it it that particular species is going to be vanished so the adaptation to the new change or the adaptation to the new environmental condition is very very important phenomena of the living organisms so these are the things what defines the living objects and these are the things which we are going to study within this particular type of uh, uh, course actually. So let us understand some of these uh, properties. So diversity and complexity in the biological system. So diversity and the complexity in the biological system is a very very important thing which actually is very very which makes the biology very interesting right you might have you, you you see these are the different types of flowers these are the different types of flowers are present in the northeast part of the india right uh, like assam meghalaya manipur and all those uh, 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 states so these and you see the diff, so much variety of the flowers are present and that's how there is a diversity and the complexity in the biological system the, the that complexity and the diversity is in terms of the different types of organisms, different types of organisms and different types. So let's see what are different types of complexity is present in the biological system so that you will understand that studying these particular type of organism is uh, not an easy task. So complexity in terms of, so as per the rough estimate, a total of, a total species present on the planet Earth are 8.7 million these species are widely distributed both on the terrestrial earth and inside the oceans so you see the the the, the number of uh, species what are present on the planet planet earth is 8.7 million and this uh, this these are distributed on the all the three parts like they will be present in the water right so they will be present in the oceans they will be present on the earth and they are also present in the airs right so within the air you have the birds within the earth you have all the terrestrial animals like dog cat you know buffaloes elephants and within the water you are actually going to have the fishes so you have the different types of fishes and so on so you see here is the total number of earth so you have majorly you have the two different categories you have the eukaryotes and the, uh, the prokaryotes don't worry about these terminologies because this is just an introductory class so i am just giving you uh, the you know so, so we are going to define all these terminologies in the subsequent lectures so eukaryotes you can within the eukaryotes you can have the animals you can have the chorismetas you can have the fungi you can have the planet the planty so you see the different types of species what are present on to the surface or what is present within the oceans and you see the distributions within the animals, corismeta, fungi or planets, planty, they are distributed thoroughly from you know uh, on the both the uh, locations. Similarly you have the prokaryotes, so prokaryotes are the lower organisms and they are also being the you know uh, thoroughly uh, distributed within the terrestrial animals or the oceans. Uh, what I am not have not considered is the viruses because uh, or even other organ smaller organisms. So what I have taken is only the eukaryotes and the prokaryotes. Now what is the diversity? Diversity is in the theme of in the in the in in terms of shapes. The shape of the different organisms present. Uh, present varied a lot within the prokaryotes bacteria of different shapes such as the bacilli cocci etc in eukaryotes the plants are found with different shapes right you might have seen the plants which are of very very tiny like a few millimeter plants or you can have you might have seen the trees right very very big trees right then you have the shape 
the shape of the different organism varies from very tiny virus particles to a giant blue whales if you go to any you know this is very important right so if you if you go to any uh, zoo right within india right you will see that zoo is actually having a museum right where you are actually going to see that they are actually going to put all these living organism on a display with a with a scale right and if you see the scale you will see that how the blue whale is is almost like to 30, uh, 30 to 35 times bigger than the humans so there if you see you will understand and then you will be able to appreciate that how the biology uh, how the you know different uh, biological organisms are being actually varied in terms of size then you have the spatial distributions so living organism are distributed from the extreme cold weather right you might have seen that the polar bears which are present in a very very extreme cold conditions to very hot region of the planet they are also distributed on land water and in the air so we have already discussed right on the land you have the lions you have the buffaloes you have the dog and cat in the water you have the different types of fishes like shark uh, dolphins and uh, ornamental fishes and in the air you may have the different types of birds like then in that uh, apart from that the complexity also comes when they are uh, talking about the biological activity so due to the wide distribution of the species to the extreme conditions the species have devised the metabolic reactions to adopt these conditions and because of that the biological activities are also going to be different right for example the polar bear it ha if it has to survive in that extreme cold conditions it has to run its metabolic reaction in such a way so that it should actually be able to keep its body warm right similarly you might have seen the fishes which are also been present in the lake but you the lake is completely frozen right you might have seen the dull uh, every year i think we show we when the there is a winter people show the video of the dull gene, right and that is very you know famous in every year i think the news reporters are actually showing the uh, the news of the Daljeel got frozen, right? That does not mean that the organism what are present in that particular lake is going to be die, right? Because if there is a frozen thing, right? So what, what they do is they have adopted, they are actually going through the different types of biological, they have adopted the biological activity in such a way that they could be able to survive even in that extreme cold condition or even the frozen conditions. So this is all, uh, where the you know you have to appreciate and understand that the biology or the bio living organisms are very very complex. They are actually complex in terms of the diversity and is in they are also complex in terms of their diversity. And because of that, it is easy to understand them if you understand the relationship between the different organisms. But it is also difficult in terms of that you cannot understand some of the unknown factors which might be uh, governing that particular type of phenomena. So uh, in this particular course, we are actually going to understand the living organisms. So if you want to understand the living organisms, you have to understand the many aspects of the living organisms. As I said, you know, the living organisms are very, very complex in terms of the shape in terms of the size in terms of the spatial distribution or in terms of the biological activity and that's how because they are so much diversified it is impossible for a particular uh, scientist to study all these uh, you know 8.7 million species uh, organism to be studied individually and that's how you might have to categorize these animals so because of that you might have to uh, you know uh, use the different types of organisms or different types of criteria for example first thing what you have to do is you have to classify these organisms so that you can be able to understand the relationship between the different organisms so how uh, if you classify them the 8.7 million could actually be can categorized into five to six different bigger groups so if you uh, study one group you can be able to uh, study the for example 1 million animals or species right so if you can classify them and if you group them then you can just pick up one organism from the each group 
and you can just study that in detail and that is actually going to be a representative animal for example if i want to study the uh, the uh, you know the for example the fishes right so i can just take the uh, one fish right and i can just study all the different properties of that particular fish and that is actually more or less going to group for all the fishes what is present in that particular water right once you study that you can also study the evolution right because evolution is actually going to give you the relationship between the these 8.7 million species of the uh, or living organisms once you understand the evolutions then you can actually understand the different types of cells right as i said you know the living organisms are complex in nature so they are actually be able to made up of of different types of cells so if you understand the cells if you understand different types of cells then you can be able to understand the uh, you know how this this particular organism is made up of and you know that the cells are made up of of the biomolecules right you are the cells are made up of of the different types of biomolecules and these biomolecules you can if you study the biomolecules you can be able to understand how these cells are made up of what are the different types of metabolic reactions are happening how the uh, how these biomolecules are being utilized in the different types of metabolic reactions and how the uh, these biomolecules are playing crucial roles similarly to that the biomolecules if you can also study if once you understand the properties of these biomolecules you can be able to understand the cellular processes and the once you understand the cellular processes you can be able to summarize these cellular processes and then you that's actually is going to tell you about the physiology of that particular organism because ultimately you want to understand the physiology of that particular organism and uh, what are because for example how we move right how we uh, you know run from one place to another place or how the plants are actually synthesizing the food these things if you want to understand you have to first understand the cells right where the plants are actually performing these reactions then you have to understand the you know biomolecules like the enzymes and all other kinds of proteins lipids which are participating in these reactions and then you have to understand the cellular processes and when you integrate these all these informations you can be able to understand the physiology you can be able to understand how the stomata are opening within the uh plants right and that's how they are actually taking the oxygen how we are breathing right so if you say that breathing is a process that breathing process you cannot understand until you understand the morphology of the lungs until you understand the morphology of the ribs until until you understand the many such thing right until you don't understand the 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 whole passage of the breathing process so with this i would like to conclude our lecture here in a subsequent lecture we are going to discuss each of these aspects individually and with this uh, we would like to integrate the whole stories uh, or whole picture so that you will be able to understand the living organism in a better way we also going to discuss what will be the advantage of understanding the living organism because uh, you know what will be the advantage that also we are going to discuss so with this i would like to conclude my lecture here thank you